Metal Gear Solid V Ground Zeroes, Sinister Cash Grab by Konami, or Severely Misinterpreted by Gamers Everywhere? So since launch day, I've been playing through Metal Gear Solid V Ground Zeroes, and the one thing that I want to clear right off the bat is that I have seen several different reports, even before this game had launched, that this game was ridiculously short, saying it was two hours or under when it comes to the total play time. I want to go on ahead and I want to put this to rest right here, right now. This game is not two hours long. Let me explain. As I'm looking at my screen right now, because I had pulled up my records for Ground Zeroes, I've put in six and a half hours of playtime, and I'm only 37% complete with this game. There's no way that anybody who goes around reviewing this game saying that it's less than four hours, cough, angry Joe, cough, there's no way. No way. And I haven't even played I haven't even played through every single mission on every single difficulty. Because this game, and it's in the fact that people don't think that it's open world, this game is full of choice. I, I don't this is probably one of the most I, I don't really know how to describe it. It's the most open, most free game that I've played in quite some time. And as far as production this game is AAA all the way. Like th This is blowing my mind at how good that this looks. When I first started up this game, I thought I was playing something on a high-end PC. That's how well this game looks. For some odd reason, though, when you look at the promotional material for the videos for this game, a lot of it seems to look washed out, and the colors seem a bit off, and I'm not exactly sure what's up with that because it's not a fair representation of how this looks, at least coming from the PlayStation 4. I can't speak for the Xbox One or the previous generation of consoles. So, if any of you are worried about not getting your money's worth for $30, I think for a game that I'm six and a half hours in and only have completed 37% of it, I think that's well worth $30 considering that there's a lot of $60 games out there that don't even last for six hours, period. Especially on the PlayStation 4. I'm looking at you, Knack, and Killzone Shadowfall. So, with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. Take everything that you knew about Metal Gear and throw it out the window. Yeah, there are a few things here and there that are still left over from previous entries. Essential things that it wouldn't be a Metal Gear without, such as guards having an exclamation mark pop up over their head when they spot you. But then you initiate into a completely optional, can-be-turned-off reflex mode. Reflex mode is going to be the one thing that takes people who have never played a Metal Gear game before and think that they are experts. Reflex mode allows you to, it, when you get spotted, it slows the game down, allows you to go into a slow-mo sequence to pull up your firearm and attempt to get a headshot before they alert everybody around them. It makes the game really, really easy on normal mode, but hard mode, it's exceptionally balanced due to the fact that the reflex mode is a snap of your fingers, and then a, another one, a snap second later, and that's it. So, and of course, it can be completely turned off if you want to be a Metal Gear purist. Now, another addition to the gameplay is the fact that you now have a binoculars that you're able to look through and spot enemies a la Far Cry 3. At first, I thought this system would have made the game a little too easy. And it does kind of take away a little bit of the difficulty curve, but at the same time, you're looking at these enemies' patterns, and sometimes I believe these enemies don't even have a set pattern. They just randomly go off and do whatever they want. This allows you to properly strategize and think of a path and execute a path, and if you get caught, well, obviously that path does not work. But I think that it helps slow the game down a little bit, makes you think. Metal Gear has always had a kind of a, a mechanic similar to that. It's not necessarily like Splinter Cell, which isn't necessarily as much 
of a thinking man stealth game. Hell, the more recent Splinter Cells, you can just blast your way through the game no problem. And with that, you can attempt to blast your way through Ground Zeroes, but you are not going to complete your mission or even get a very good rating, period. So, a few things have changed here gameplay-wise, and primarily I think they're for the better. I didn't really have that big of a deal. I wasn't screaming heresy at some of the things that they changed because, frankly, some of the big problems that I had with the gameplay, I can just turn off. And that's good, because I shouldn't have to have the reflex mode forced down my throat. As for graphics, as I had mentioned before, this game looks amazing. If you follow me on Tumblr, I made a post about this game using screenshots from the PlayStation 4. Even the pressed options to play screen, when you first load it up, looks amazing. I never noticed any frame rate drops. I've never... I, hell, you don't even notice the transitions between gameplay and cutscene. That's how seamless this game is. And if this is any indication of how the Phantom Pain is going to be, and we know that the Phantom Pain is going to be a larger open world, this is a small, confined base. And I know how that may sound, but this base, they, people say that it's small, but it's really not. It's got so much freedom of how you can execute an infiltration plan that... I find myself going back through missions going, well, well, if I did it this way, what happens if I try to go through here? How much resistance do I have going in through this secret path? Oh, look, here's an uncovered air vent that I can go through. I don't remember that being there last time. I always find something new every time I load up a mission in Ground Zeroes. And that, to me, is very pleasant. But going back graphically, I... the it looks great. That's about it. I mean, I, I can't really say much more other than this is probably some of the best cutscene work that I've ever seen in a video game. And that's to be expected from somebody like Hideo Kojima because that's what he emphasizes. Story and making movies look really, really good. Hopefully when The Phantom Pain comes out, it won't be one large movie like Metal Gear Solid 4 was. So, if you're at all worried about Ground Zeroes, whether or not to invest in this. I can tell you right now, if you're somebody who likes to have games with high replayability, who likes to be challenged over and over again, and try to beat that record, or try to find this hidden cassette tape, that's another thing too, there's collectibles everywhere, and rescuing prisoners, and trying to get that S rank, and the trophy list is even difficult. I'm finding it hard to even complete some of them. And hell, it took me at least two and a half hours to find all the XOF patches without looking up a guide on the internet. There's so much to do in Ground Zeroes, and I feel that so many people on the internet are not giving it its due. Yeah, it is a demo to The Phantom Pain, but it's a demo that could easily last for, I don't know, well, six and a half hours at roughly 40%. It could easily last for almost 20 hours. 20 hours for 30 bucks? Try to find a PS4 launch title that lasts longer than that. If I had to give Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes a grade out of 10, I would give it a 9. There's only one small thing missing from this. And that's the fact that I wanted the Javius Vu mission, and that's the only reason why I'm giving it a 9, so you might as well just give it a perfect. And I know how this... I, I don't like the fact that this review is going to be completely taken like as if I'm some kind of Kojima fanboy. Oh, when I overall enjoy the series, this is a good game. You you should at least try it. If you don't want to pay out the $30 for it, find someone who bought it. Because there are people out there. This 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 game is quickly becoming one of the best-selling titles on the PlayStation 4. If not, well, the Xbox One has Titanfall, so I doubt it's going to sell out there. But this is, this is going to be good. And the Phantom Pain, well, I can't wait. So... Hopefully that'll come out sometime early in 2015. So that's what I think about Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. What do you think about the game? Leave a comment down below. Whether it's positive or negative, I don't care. Just tell me what you think about this. Phantasm Mask here, signing out. Oh, Kiefer Sutherland as a big boss? Not a problem with it. It's pretty damn good.
think he's going to do a good job in the Phantom Pain.